Right, roof clamp series. We featured these in the vlog the other day. We've now got them and we will get them on the website for sale. So we've been selling the roof clamp blocks for a while and this is a block. Normally on the roof rails, jump up here Tyler, let's have a look. On the roof rack. Now this is much the same on the, yeah, you can share the step Tyler. So we've got the Expedition roof rack on our Land Rover Defender and there's a little rubber trim you can remove and you can buy some sort of T-slot that sort of slot in here and you could almost use a coach bolt. But I'm, I've never really been a big fan of T-slots because you've got a very limited area of aluminium and it's only just holding it on like that and it could psh. So we've developed these clamp blocks. Now, even if you haven't got the Expedition roof rack, you might just have the crossbars going across and we've made the, the clamps for the crossbars and we've done them now for the Disco 3 and 4 and Freelander 2 and we're trying to get the whole series of Land Rover clamps ready. So. The idea is, so you've now seen what the T-slot ones look like. And so rather than a T-slot, we've sort of got this, we call it like a ring of steel. So we've got these stainless steel coach bolts, these steel plates top and bottom, and these 3D printed blocks that make sure the clamping force is spread and any upward or downward force is spread across the bars uniformly. And these are quite quick and easy to fit. So let me show you fitting a set of these. What you can do, you just undo one of the bolts, <laughs> loosen the other. You should, how are we gonna do this, Tyler? We're fighting for the same real estate here. So get them the right way round. Let's pull that bolt out. And you, you can, if you're clever, you can sort of rotate them to one side, bring them up and you should better get, I just did it, there you go. And you can get that up. And we put square holes in the top of the steel plates, you can see which hold the coach bolt still. So you only need one hand and one spanner to tighten them up. And there we go. Now you could use that to mount a whole series of whatever you want. And instead of these top plates, we do some other plates that you could, and you could use it to mount an awning and we've got it. It's almost level with the side here so that you could have a, a plate coming off here and over the side if you wanted to mount awnings and the like. So it gives you a mount point and you'll have to use longer bolts or whatever, depending on what you're doing. Now, one problem, and it's a blessing and a curse, on this roof rack, it's quite sleek, it's quite two dimensional. On the older Discovery 3 G4 roof racks, it had a guard <laughs> over there, yes? He's residing, he's retired over there. It has a guard round us up. And then if you wanna put your, your spare wheel or your travel chests on the top, you've got something that the acts as a stop, like an end wall, now, which is lacking on this. So we have developed these, we call them bookends, don't we, Tyler? So yeah. do you want to grab me a bookend there, Tyler, while I show them the beauty of a bookend? And the idea of these bookends is they are going to replace this top steel plate. So they are going to go on here like this. I'm going to put this down to that. If I do them one at a time, I can keep it on there and just do a simple upgrade. Now, th this is more than a bookend. So it could be a bookend just to stop your luggage flying off the side, give it some sideways lateral location. Um, but we've also got a couple of other trick features built in. I'm trying to get this nut on where I can't see it. All right, let me just get this one on. There you go. Right, now the idea is you can slide this along to wherever you want it and then you can tighten it up and clamp it down and that will stay securely in place. Now, the other feature of this is if you've got a strap and you want to take a strap over a, an object, you can strap it on using this area here. But we've also built in this little hole here and this is for mounting a light bar. So we're going to grab a light bar now with an end fitting and show you how it could be used to mount a light bar and obviously you can adjust these along here to adjust to the width of your light bar right tyler and i'll get one set up now oh that's blinding tyler what's going on so there we go we've mounted the light bar i'll turn the lights off in a moment but we've mounted it on the top of the defender there that just took a couple of minutes wiring it in is a different issue we haven't worked that out yet have we tyler we've got a couple of ideas on that i'll turn that look look you've blinded my sheep tyler right Let's just turn that off. We just put that on a on a 12 volt supply. Ooh. So, let me turn the lights on. The advantage is 
you can adjust it to the length of your light bar you could have two small light bars and again you don't have to buy an expensive roof rack you could just buy the crossbars and this also applies to disco 3 disco 4 um, so we're really pleased with that that's super solid that is absolutely you can see we've got the bolts fitted in the end it's clamped one little detail we did was we put two little neoprene gaskets where they join because they never fully join because they're always clamping so we put a couple of neoprene gaskets there just to keep the moisture out even though they're stainless steel fittings but that is kind of an elegant and quick way of fitting a light bar take it off just easy. take it up two minutes there we go let us know what you think comments and we'll put those for sale on the website but give us a couple of days